If you're listening on podcasts, be sure to tune in to our YouTube channel on YouTube at Wild and Weird WV. Welcome to Wild and Weird Radio, a Wild and Weird West Virginia podcast. What's going on, guys? Good to be back with everybody. This week's episode is going to be covering um, North American pyramids, and we're going to dive into that soon. But we wanted to uh, just check with you guys. How's your week been? It's been an uneventful weekend. Uh, it was not too bad. Um, nothing great. Nothing. Uh, nothing terrible. Worked on a few new projects. Things like that. Right on. Right on. Brandon, how was yours? Oh, I've been fighting with my dryer. Oh. I only got it fixed today. Those are always fun. I've I've cannot tell you how many re dryers I have rebuilt over the years. But luckily they're fairly simple to do. It just is a pain to do by yourself. Oh yeah, well it's because so the vent used to go straight through the wall and they added this rack that goes around the washer and dryer it blocked off the uh, the old exit so they rerouted it for some reason to go straight up through the roof of the house why not <laughs> so makes perfect kind of a pain sense to clean to that out <laughs> yeah, man that perfect sense that's that's great yeah you normally want those straight piped unless you've got some kind of a forced air to uh evacuate that going through a roof yeah. yikes yeah, yeah I'm thinking about changing that real quick. <laughs> yeah, I think I would too, man. So, uh, do what we we've got a few things in the news that are yeah, there's a, there's a little bit of news yeah mulling there's, about. Yeah, there's a little bit of news out there. <clears throat> so, first off, a uh, uh, off on my deck. I've, uh, there were two things. Both both of my news article pieces that I've uh, really dug into are ancient history kind of things. Mm -hmm. And the first one, one of the High Strangers Collective members and executive producers of Wild and Weird Radio shared an article from uh, these new species that have been discovered in Mammoth Cave in Kentucky. Two mm -hmm. new species of shark have been discovered. And if anybody's really been paying attention to some of the stuff coming out of mammoth cave, um, mm -hmm. this makes like the fifth or sixth new species of shark that has been discovered in mammoth cave over the last two or three years, as well as tons of invertebrates and, and other bony fish species that have been recovered. Yeah. There's a, there's a whole, uh, just a, a lost world right there that they're pretty much discovering as far as it goes in that cave. I know they said that he he looked up and, and found the uh, the tooth uh, in the ceiling, and then he had mm -hmm. to figure out a way to get up there and, and get to it. Of course, it's you know this is all off, off limits to people, so don't think you're going to go there and <laughs> find some cool fossils. You're not. Um, it's it's really a historical site, and uh, it's been excavated and documented properly, I believe. Well, you know, normally anytime one of those sites gets discovered, it's one of the first things that happens is it gets cordoned off. It's off limits to the public public till further excavations can be performed. And we're going to be talking about a little bit of that tonight as well. Um, what anybody else have anything cool on the news desk? Well, you got over there, Brandon, anything? Um, I've got that one article where these scientists are trying to debunk Foo Fighters. Oh, yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. That's awesome. Go ahead and so, fill us in a little bit on that. So their explanation was they were just uh, balls of plasma that were attracted to the planes. Because mm -hmm. that happens. Yeah. 
I right? can't tell you how many times I have how many been times you seen that Jeff? And have been traced by a ball of plasma in the air. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I uh, thought Tony I th brought a good point up. Uh, he did. Usually these types of events have certain things that have to happen before they can show up. Mm -hmm. They need to like outline exactly, you know, what has changed with what they know about these things. To make it suddenly chase airplanes. <laughs> oh yeah. No, no, it's true. It's, it's a hundred percent true. And you know, they like to quote, you know, that wonderful Saganistic term, right? That extraordinary proof, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But it doesn't work on their own stuff. It's right. Okay. Yeah. If you, if you question them and give, bring up the, well, your claim requires proof. No. Well, this is science. Yeah, it's science. This, I mean, plasma exists. Course, right? Plasma exists. That's enough. It's yeah. it's okay. Plasma exists. So theoretically, it could do this. It's yep. not how that works, guys. That's just not how it works. I don't care what you believe or think you, you know, you know about this, but that's not how it works. I've never seen a, uh, how big were these balls of plasma, by the way, uh, they were saying? I mean, these are monster balls of plasma, right? Yeah, these were large. I mean, you're talking aircraft-sized balls of plasma. Yeah, yeah they're saying that there's one type. It's called a sprite, which are disc-shaped and can be 25 miles across. Well, a, a sprite is, that's not, we know what that is. Is that what they're actually quoting? Are they really quoting yeah, a that's, sprite? That is what they, that's one of the types of plasma that they quoted. Yeah. You're kidding me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know what that is. That's that's that That involves... High, uh, basically high altitude lightning strikes. That's that's yeah. not going to chase a plane. And they're lightning strikes typically that go up. And yeah, they them. are. Sprites mm -hmm. and uh, what's the other one? Blue fire. something. There's uh, blue dwarfs or something like that. What is it called? I don't remember what it's called. It's off the top I, of my head. I can't remember either, but I know which remember. one you're talking about. But yeah, like, but the but point is way, they don't move. They don't move. And it's it's a brilliant once, and then there's a few seconds of illumination and over. You're not ch yeah. being chased by this thing. I mean, they're beautiful. You can see the pictures from the International Space Station. They've, yeah. they've had some great uh, pictures over the over the years. But come on, guys, you got to do better at this. Yes, this is pathetic. This is well, beyond pathetic. That one is what they're using to explain what sky jellies are. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure I haven't heard any. One mentioned that sky jellies were 25 miles across. Right. But then again, I'm not a scientist. Now, okay, just playing devil's advocate here, okay? I can see with a sprite, only with a sprite, where you might have an extremely dense cloud in the same way that we can see certain outlines and shapes during the day and our brains turn it into an animal. They're like, oh, look, that one looks like a bunny. That being backlit, a very heavily water-laden cloud, could maybe you'd see an outline and be like, oh, it looks like a jellyfish because, you know, it's strung out or something. But under normal circumstances, you would, the person seeing this, their first thing would not be, it's a monster. It'd be like, oh, that's a weird cloud. But a lot of these sky jelly things, they're seen moving and undulating and and literally traversing in at, yep. at high rates of speed or slow rates of speed sometimes. But they're still seen traversing and and seem to be more organic rather than... Mm -hmm. Here's another explanation they put at the end of it. Um, What's that, there's a type that's called elves, which are disc-shaped and can be 250 miles across. That's, I guess that's their... Ooh, okay. Explanation for disc shape UFO. Okay, two hundred fifty miles across. Two hundred and fifty. Are they not living in the same reality that we are? <laughs> because okay, here's the thing. Even even, you know, Kirkpatrick, <clears throat> even he had the data that said we're dealing with things that are like twenty to thirty feet. Yeah, yeah. that's not that's not miles, Brandon. I, I don't mean. Do they not know? the difference between feet and miles? Do they, do they not? I mean, if you're going to explain something away, you're going to have to at least come into the same logical uh, framework of, of yeah. reference. It's just, this doesn't work. I'm sorry. Yeah. And it's more pathetic. And honestly, it is. It's completely pathetic because we've ignored this for, you know, almost 80 years. And all of a sudden, oh, we know what they are now. Well, you never gave a crap before. Why do you give a crap now? 
that's amazing that you really give a crap now. Now that the uh, you know the Wikipedia thing is going on, uh, where they're editing away uh, certain bits of information and and yeah. making it all kind of you know sparkly clean and everybody who believes in UFOs is crazy again. You well, know, okay, the, no, this don't article, this. don't do this. In in reality, this article, if you if anybody's read it, this article feels like somebody just said. Hey, Steve. Yeah. Write an article about the Foo Fighters. You don't have to be some stuff that could displace it. And they sit in front of their computer at their desk Mm -hmm. in the very office that they were told without opening a book, without speaking to witnesses, without doing anything. And just said, oh, uh, here's some light phenomena that occurred. These could have been what it was. Here's your article. Publish. (laughs) That's really what this felt like, because the whole time it was like, grasping for straws mm-hmm. we're, never... we're gonna see yeah, more of it we're gonna see more of it like uh, i i even went to google and looked up those phenomenon because i'm not familiar with them and none of them look anything like what the no. people say they see no, they the, food don't. Now, the, the elf phenomenon is actually pretty cool looking because it looks like a hole in the clouds with stuff falling out of it mm-hmm. it's pretty neat looking but i've never heard of someone reporting a ufo like that thank you brandon that's uh that's exactly uh what should be said I've yeah. never heard of anyone reporting UFO like that. You're hundred percent right. But <clears throat> we did get some news from old uh, Avi Loeb again, didn't we? And we did. uh Avi is I just love the way this man just goes at his detractors. You know, it wasn't more than just a, a couple of weeks ago that they were saying, Ah, oh, you're crazy, you know, there's see, we told you there's nothing to this because you know, Kirkpatrick said there wasn't anything to it. And uh, what's he say? <laughs> He goes out and says, well, um, I found something in those samples that we got off the bottom of the ocean that we went out and got because no one else would, by the way. Right. Yeah. Uh, We did the work because no one else would, by the way, because they told us that it was a waste of time because they told us that this was pointless because they don't want to know something that they think they already know. And what he found was that, uh, in his quotes, uh, it raises the possibility that it may have been a Voyager-like meteor artificially made by another civilization. Well. Hmm. Oh, but wait. That? Oh, but wait. It gets better because, you know, of those skeptics who kept saying, you know, oh, those were just human produced coal ash or whatever they were. They've come up with some wonderful uh, debunking for that too, Brandon. Um, He said, well, what we did is compared 55 elements from the periodic table in coal ash to those sphericals, um, spherules that we found. And he said, it's clearly very different. He said the work, um, His work follows the scientific method, collecting material, analyzing them, and following the evidence. In his quote, it's not based on an opinion. And of course, if you're not part of the scientific process and you are jealous of the attention that it gets, then you can raise a lot of criticism. Called him out really good right there, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, he did. And uh, he's going to be giving a uh, little lecture on that there coming up real soon. So I think we're going to hear a little bit more about this. But, yeah, that's an official paper. They can they can go and read that and, you know, try to come up with some more things for that, I guess. But, um, yeah, I mean, I thought that was pretty remarkable in, in uh, you know, in the in the wake of, of this nonsense that everyone thinks that we can just ex- suddenly explain away everything. And because uh, we can't, you know, that's the fact we can't. It's also, it's funny, like the more and more evidence you present to them, the more they want to debunk it, the yeah. more they just, yeah. the harder they to fight said it. evidence, the harder. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's harder. It's because they can't, you know, they gotta, they gotta be on top, man. It's us and them. That's what it's always been about. That's what it's always going to be about. And that's the problem. I think for it's because they're losing control of the narrative is what it is. They are, but they're trying to gain it back as fast as they can. You know, speaking of losing control of narratives, the next article is probably the first for 2024 of the rolling back of time yet again. 
how many times did we see it last year where human right history on. kept getting bumped back and bumped back and bumped back further and further and further in different continents, not just in, in history, but just the existence of modern human homo sapien sapien existing. It's just and faulty data. It's just faulty data. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, what happened here was once upon a time, these uh, tools were found and believed to have been made by Neanderthal because Neanderthal was in Europe, Northern Europe, and known to be in Northern Europe, but it had been around 40,000 years in the past. Now, they also knew that Neanderthals were, you know, human-like and very, very close relatives of ours, but they thought that around mm -hmm. 45,000 years ago was kind of the benchmark. Yeah. Well, that got pushed way, way back, given the fact that at this cave site, uh, upon further inspection of these tools, mm -hmm. was modern Homo sapien bone fragments at the bottom of this pit. And that these bones dated to be around 45,000 years old, the same time that they thought the earliest time for Homo sapien or Homo neanderthal or the Neanderthal, I think it's, uh, I can't remember the Latin, but anyway, the Neanderthals. Neanderthalus or something like but, that. But yeah. they had thought 45,000 years ago was when the Neanderthal, that was the earliest time they were there. However, they've now found that this was not just mm -hmm. a few tool fragments, but it was actually as uh, Jean Jacquet Hublin, a professor at the College de France, said that this was actually an early Homo sapien toolkit. So oh, there wow. were more <clears throat> pieces than just the uh, the points that were discovered. There were scrapers, there were hammerheads, there were other tools like nutting nutting rocks and things of that nature. This was a whole toolkit that wound up being pulled out and recovered. And it completely just blows away modern anthropology and paleontology because it pushes it, the, the movement of modern humans north back by several tens of thousands of years. And now they've got a benchmark at 45,000 years ago not only do we have these uh, Homo sapien remains and toolkit, but these weren't just travelers. <laughs> so it um, it pushes back the the time clock on this specific location and and on that northern latitude across the board. So I think that yeah. that means that they're going to be starting to look at some other further north and equally lateral uh, dig sites and remains that have been previously discovered and classified as Neanderthal. And I think they're going to be surprised at what they pull out of some of these boxes that are stowed away in storage rooms. I remember uh, one of the biggest surprising things they announced last year was that they found out that Neanderthals can make canoes. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that. So that could explain how... You know, it seems like certain information has been, you know, passed around the continents, around the world, like how to make pyramids and whatnot. That could be one yeah. explanation. But they That's a different thing altogether, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I, I, I get what you're saying. You know, it, it explains why the, some of these remains mm -hmm. are being recovered in places that were previously thought to be off limits. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, excuse humans for judging these other species of human what these, these other species of homo for thinking that they were uh humans? less than human capacity judge? to to us and our phones that you know these guys were actually <clears throat> building means of traversal well there's also a possibility that they were actually teaching as well so you know right. there's that and uh, if that's the case, boy, you got some you got some thinkings to do, boys and girls. That you got you some thinkings to do. I wouldn't be surprised if mm, they, they found, found the evidence ship. No, I'm sorry. of uh, Neanderthal stoneworking at some point. Been building right. structures. Well, well whatever's the left of them, I guess. 
Yeah. He, right, exactly. What's left of him. Mm-hmm. And, and then trying well, to pin it back, you'd, you'd almost have to find it with like <clears throat> some kind of biologic remains. Yeah, I would want to bet yeah. that some of the older stone circles that we think are old are way older than we think they are. Maybe even made by Neanderthals and humans just repurposed them. Well, yeah, the problem is you can't, you can't date it. Inherited them. Yeah, you can't date a rock. That's the bad thing. You, you got to have biologics it. of some sort, some some kind of carbon-based uh, minerals and material that you'll be the able to... The problem with that is uh, you'd have to go to the base of those structures, mm-hmm. and they're not yeah. legally allowed to disturb them. So. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Yep. This is how and, human history works. We don't want to know. And while while it is, you know, I understand part of me understands why you cannot and you should not go and destroy, disturb or unearth some of these things. Like how much of our history are we missing because we've put these things off limits and how much of those limits were placed because other people knew what we would find. That's the best part right there. Yeah, I don't don't think they should move all of them. Just like just one. You only need one. You only need one to tell you. That's it. Literally. You only need one. As far as I know of, they've not actually dug at Stonehenge since like the early 1900s. It's all been like ground penetrating radar. Yeah, yeah. They they can do all kinds of stuff around them, but they can't go near them or within the circle. Right, I think is what the rule is. I think that there would be a way to do it. Honestly, they just don't want to, man. Not lying to you. I don't think that they want to, and I don't think they want the legal battle. Uh, because they'd have to actually explain to someone, look, we're not going to destroy anything. We're going to dig a hole straight down and we're going to take a sample from down here. And that's it. You will never know it happened. Yeah. And, you know, try to explain that to people who already think they know the answer. Yeah, maybe um, there's literally all there. you'd have to do is find out how deep are those stones or, yeah. is, you know, because not all of them, you know, Stonehenge is is there but like how much deeper and it's easy to find how much deeper those stones go underground Mm -hmm. and then you get a very good drill bore at a 45 degree angle underneath it get underneath it take some kind of mechanized device to go in there and scrape at the bottom to get material from that area and retrieve it backfill the hole and you're done yeah maybe they'll be um wouldn't be hard wood from whatever structures they built to raise those things, hemp yeah. rope, something like exactly. that. They could really use a tool. Exactly. Maybe even. Exactly. And theoretically, you know, the, there could be some of that wood still there. Yeah. Uh, that organics could still be there. Yes, absolutely. Brandon. And uh, like I said, I just don't think they want to know. Yeah. I think maybe yeah. they intentionally leave it as a mystery because it attracts mm-hmm. tourists more. <laughs> well, that too. I mean, you know, Tourists well, be tourists. They like cool stuff. So that's exactly right. So it's great to say tourists like cool stuff and like they like to go in as a big, big source of tourism. Yep. And you know, humans. Well, that's the news for now, I think. And uh, you guys don't have anything else, do you? As far as news goes? No, no, not. Good? I don't. That's All right. That's we're true. wrapping her up so we can get on to this. Abridged. Um, okay, so and now I gotta That's tell right. you guys what's going on because I can catch you back there singing or something, right? Yeah, so so this week's episode is uh one that we've been meaning to touch for a while, and then our audience actually requested it. Um, so we threw it in here into the mix, and it's it's a topic that uh, all three of us are very interested in for obvious reasons, but. It is the pyramids in North America. You know, we don't, we hear a lot about the pyramids in Giza. We hear a lot about the pyramids in Mezzo and South and Central America. We hear a lot about pyramids in other places that have been discovered or like, or pseudo pyramids like ziggurats. But we don't hear much about North America. Why do you think that is? Well, it doesn't take much to to explain why that is because the stuff that was here was simply in the way. 
Yeah, there was uh, a pretty big effort by white scientists in the 1800s and early 1900s to pretty much erase them from history, to yeah. try to erase them from any sort yeah. of proof that they ever had the land before us and that they were here before us. They just, I mean, literally whitewashed it. No, literally. You're the way to put right. it, yeah. they whitewashed it. No, it's true. It's 100% true. They still do. Yeah. I mean, like, remember when we were in school, how much of this stuff were we taught? Mm. Nothing. All I remember being taught was there were Native American villages here and here and here. That was it. That's all. Yeah, we, um, uh, what we were taught in West Virginia, and this was only in West Virginia studies. This was not in our history books that we were taught. Yeah. This was just in West Virginia studies. And the only thing we learned about that time period in uh, the Americas was about the Adena and the Hopewell people, the mound builders. Mm -hmm. yeah. And even that was still limited because there were large earthworks that we were told about that were here in West Virginia. But again, like Ron said, they were just in the way. They were just in the way. I mean, I live they right down... Destroyed. Right down th from the base of, of where I live, there was one of the largest, and it's it, it was amazing. Apparently, yeah. uh, apparently it was a um, it was like a Mesoamerican style, mm -hmm. and it was in a way. Today, there's a interstate that goes through there. Yeah, and then there was another large structure just below it. Now it wasn't like the Mesoamerican site that Ron was mentioning, but down the road, less less than two miles from his hill. At the mouth of the Elk River and the Kanoa River, or the confluence, rather, not the mouth, uh, at the confluence, there was a large series of mounds and earthworks that were built right there that were all leveled. Now it's a bridge, a park, yep. and roadways. Yep. It was in the way. That's, that's literally what happened. Yeah. And they didn't care. If I was one of those natives that were buried in that mound, I would haunt the crap out of everybody that steps foot on that property. <laughs> I would make well, it so terrifying. They wouldn't even want to come they, near it. They probably do. Look at St. Albans. <laughs> Look at Dunbar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Look true. at those areas. Yeah. I mean, for real. Think about it. Mm -hmm. uh, Dunbar, it's, it's, it was, that was all mounds. Oh, yeah. Like mounds and mounds all along the riverway. And they're just, leveled there's houses there now um i don't know what to say about it other than it's just it is what it is i mean what do we have like one in the area down there that's still around and that's the yeah. the uh, shawnee mount well there's two because <clears throat> right down to a couple blocks the... away from shawnee there's the one in the cemetery right but the it's it's mount. protected and it's not really yeah. uh public access unless you're in the cemetery and if the people from the cemetery see you there that you're over there messing on the mount round mound they roll you out I like how it's uh, only protected because there are Christian burials there. Yeah, on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Lovely, lovely. But uh, probably the largest in, in North America was Cahokia. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And uh, That we know of. That we know of, yeah. And it's still there, but not in its former glory. I mean, in, in, its, in its days, I mean, you're looking at a, uh, at a city. You're looking at a city there, and it really did rival some of the uh, Mesoamerican cities. Yeah, you like know the reason the why structures. that place was saved? <laughs> there were a group of uh, Jesuit monks yes. who owned the property. They kept yeah, it the, around. The largest mound within the central works is called Monk's Mound. Monk's yeah. Mound, that's right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's right. Thank God for them. <laughs> but. Yeah, that would be that totally would have been bulldozed, and the housing settlement would have been built there at some point. Yeah. Well, you know this this area, uh, Cahokia, had uh, it was what was it over um, eight hundred different mounds in it, mm -hmm. uh, or like right around outside. Now Cahokia is protected, and um, uh, let's see, I can't remember exactly how many. It's oh, there uh, were a lot. St. Louis was thick with them. Oh yeah, St. Louis um, was stick with them. Um, they there actually was... bulldozed like a dozen of them just to build the the monument in St. Louis, the arch. Oh yeah, that's right. the The mm. thing about Cahokia that's important is that it is a true representation of a Mesoamerican pyramid. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not just a mound. It is a mound, but it's a true representation of a Mesoamerican pyramids. What's amazing about if you look at some of these constructions, like even even the mounds we have, right? They they have a certain construction to them, the way that they're made. Right. And it follows the same construction. Like it, literally, you've got a base, and then you've got your you know your mound area, right? And then they they build upon it, and they build upon it, and they build upon it. Whereas here, it's just uh, what was it uh, like a shell, coarse shell at the ba at the base or something right. like that, right? Far and more then, primitive. Mm -hmm, far more primitive, but it's the same type of layering that you that you see, right? Um, except for these things like Cahokia. Do you think maybe the mounds had a, a more definitive shape to them when they were first built, like more triangle shaped? I think they were they probably a little bit more. Now. Yeah, I think they were a little bit more triangle shaped, uh, not perfectly, but like a cone, you know? I'd say more cone shaped mm. because yeah. none, none of the mounds, yeah. um, with the exception of, say, Monk Mound, really had defined edges. Mm -hmm. Monk's Mound did have those defined edges similar to a ziggurat. You know, the, the yeah, bottom, at layers. least on the mm -hmm. bottom three tiers of it, they came to a yeah. point in the corners, mm -hmm. whereas yeah. the majority of the mounds around here were more conical. Mm -hmm. But I would imagine at one point they did have an absolute cone tip rather than being these lumps that you see today. Yeah, it's well, interesting they're... to me that Okia Mound has that ziggurat ramp. Yeah, it goes from the bottom all the way from ground level all the way up to the top. I that mean, would take, dude, that would take some advanced engineering to figure that out. The Creel Mound has that, yeah. thanks to, you know, modern engineers who went in and desecrated it. That wasn't there before, I'm pretty sure. Well, yeah, but uh, but what I'm getting at is uh, the tops of these things. Typically, that's where they went in. You know, uh, that's why they're they're lower. It's like in the one in Moundsville, it's like how many feet lower? I mean, that, that yeah. thing was huge. Same thing down here in the Creel. Um, they've all been that way. They they were going straight down, doing boring and whatnot on those. Just, yeah. you know, why are they still here? Just because someone decided they could probably figure out a way to make money off of it at some point in the future, I'll be honest with you. Um, but yeah, I mean, as far as it goes, you've got these these cities they were cities yeah. that's what they were they were cities and they were ancient cities and they didn't fit the status quo they didn't fit the well we already know about this so it can't be that's what happened does it sound familiar because that's exactly where we're at today with a lot of stuff it mm -hmm. challenges yeah. You can't challenge something that someone thinks they already know. So let's just wipe this out. Let's get rid of it. It's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. Erase history, write your own. Yeah. And then the next couple of generations, they don't question it. They don't know any better. They're not going to look. They don't care. They've got other things to do. Yeah. There's bigger things to worry about. <clears throat> exactly. More wars to fight. All kinds of stuff. I mean, you've got all kinds of crap. So think about it. So looking at Cahokia, Cahokia was originally comprised of around 200 mound structures. That was just in the St. Louis area. You're looking at a sprawling area because these mounds were not built right on top of one another. This was a series of structures. Then you've got similar construction here in the uh, Ohio Valley where we've got Serpent Mound and it had several mounds that were in its immediate vicinity. Moving further east to the Charleston, West Virginia area, there were 800 plus mounds in this region. And of those only, I think a 10 or so are still recognized as being vertical still <laughs> the yeah. rest of them were all destroyed and uh it, you know it's it's mind-blowing but these structures were here we're not taught about it but these these structures were here 
Yeah. We, we can't run from it for whatever reason we did try. And again, like Ron was saying, it was the status quo, I'm sure, did play a little bit to it. But why would you want to bury things like Cahokia? Um, Joe, um, I will present this to you. Um, the Bible didn't mention uh, mounds. <laughs> mounds. No, so literally, and I'm not, I'm, again, not bashing on, uh, you know, the Bible or religion. I'm just telling you, back in those days, yeah, that's a big deal. So if it wasn't in the the good book, then it's obviously not real or it's demons, you know. Well, I mean, they didn't uh, even really know what they were when they first rolled up on them. Nope, they didn't. So, I mean, you wouldn't be able to. And they asked the Indians. At the time, yeah, and then they they would just tell like most of most of the natives said, at the time would just say, "Yeah, they were here when we got here. They were here when mm -hmm. we got here. Yeah, they were here when we got here." And then you got the talk of you know the the uh, other races that may have been there that predated, and boy, that just that just didn't go over well, right? With some that people should, in their versions of history too, because a lot of the native tribes, their oral traditions, they remembered everything about their history basically they remember mm -hmm. old wars they remember well old treaties. that's true yeah it's very true and they had to and uh here's another thing uh, you'll get a lot of people who love skeptics on this um who like to say things like well you know the natives uh, it's just a folk story or you know all this crap right well here's the thing people don't remember generations and generations of a story verbatim just because they want to you know they don't do that they yeah. do that to keep a history alive and here's the other thing it's the elitist attitude that believes that they told you the truth when it comes to some of these legends mm -hmm. that they told you everything yeah they probably didn't tell you everything because look here man one of the stories <clears throat> i did because uh, we're going to do a uh the episode on uh, was the moon eyed people as well at some point. Um, one of the things I found while doing the research in those was that um, before the um, the removal, that's a that's a polite way of calling, uh, you know, of, of saying genocide for the removal of 60,000 people who yeah. were here before the Europeans got here. <clears throat> um, a couple of these, these guys were actually talking to some of these tribal elders and the tribal elders were telling them about, you know, these things that, that happened prior the stories before. And one of the stories was, you know, the, the, the tribe of whatever they called the, the, the moon eyed people, the little, you know, the little people whatever they were, uh, the ones that ran around the dark. <clears throat> well, the funny thing is, after that, they didn't talk about those legends anymore. And why would you? Why would I tell you my stories? Why would I tell you my history? Why would I tell you my anything when you were trying to erase my very existence yeah. and wipe out my culture completely? I can say some words here, but I won't because we're a monetized show. That would be my response. No. No, no, no. Right. So when we hear these things and they say, you know, oh, it's just, you know, legends and they were they were trying to, you know, be creative or whatever. And yeah, they weren't. They weren't. These are legends that were based upon their history, or oral teaching that yeah. spreads farther back than our history, by the way. And by our history, I'm talking about most of the people who are now settled here in North America. It's far farther back. It's yeah. your ancestors. It's their history. And that's why I think sometimes, you know, we, we can tap into that if we're um, if we're lucky enough or smart enough or, you know, can drop the uh, ego far uh, farther enough back, I guess, you know, to to realize that. um there were people here who were a lot smarter at one time. 
so you know the that with that all that said you know some of these people who are speaking with these tribal elders were anthropologists yeah these very same anthropologists were the ones that were going through and basically rummaging through these structures mm-hmm. prior to their removal and destruction and modern modern day if we were looking at this stuff today there's obviously there's more restrictions and protections that are granted now that were not back then and again it goes back to what ron was saying earlier they were just in the way but when you go back and you read some of these anthropo- anthropological journals from the 1800s, the early 1800s, leading up into the early 1900s, mm. none of them advocate for the protection except for one or two. The rest of them are just documenting as quick as they possibly can and leaving. I mean, how much... It, how much data was left on the floor because they were rushing through as quick as they could because they only had a finite amount of time before these things were completely leveled. Mm -hmm. It happens all the time. Still happens. Especially once like steam shovels and all that still happens. Still happens. I know that we have the native American graves and repatriation act says that, you know, you can't do this. You can't do that. You got to return this. Right. And if you're out there and you're bulldozing, right. And you find something, you got to halt all production. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it don't happen. I've talked to people who will tell you that don't happen. There's just shut up. You didn't see it. Just keep on moving. Yeah. They, they'll just, you know, cover it up. Say No, we didn't find this here. Unless it's like, uh, you know, like a bone or, or human remains. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't see it. No one saw it. And then it ends up being buried. I can tell you right now that right down here, uh, um, there's a, it's right across from, um, well, I guess it's where they're going to be putting in the new, you know, that, uh, what is that thing they're doing? The, uh, the airport extension, the, the roundabout. Oh, the roundabout down there. Yeah. yeah. There, down that way, down in, toward Jefferson. Um, I can tell you that right across the street, right across the street, going straight toward the river, <clears throat> you'll see a uh, parking lot. There's a parking lot there. Yeah. They were going to develop that to turn it into something one time. They found so much, from what I understand, that they just turned it into a parking lot. That's to protect it, by the way. Let's Man. just put some concrete over top of it, and we'll get to that at some point in the future. Or just, you know, that's that's how they protect stuff now. They just build a parking lot over top of it. And it's protected. They're keeps right. Keeps people from digging into it. Keeps people from digging into it. But, yeah, that's... That's uh, that's the solution a lot of the times. Just build something on top of it and move on. Yeah. Now, hmm. looking at some of these other uh, structures, these we we have Cahokia. We've also got um, the some of the Fort Ancient Era stuff over in Kentucky. Yep. You know those structures were very similar. They were stepped. Mm-hmm. These these were proper pyramid like structures. Yep. Now, how would we have a culture in North America eight to ten thousand years ago building pyramids, not using stone, but shaping them out of the materials that were here? And these structures look so similar to the structures from Peru, from Central America, from Egypt. Well, what, do, what do you guys, what's your take there? Well, you got to remember, uh, you, you brought up Peru, Pumapunku, is built upon, you know, it's bottom layers of mound. Yeah. The whole area is built upon a mound. Well, there's um, stuff that they're finding using LIDAR right now that's hidden in the jungles that they can't get to easily on foot. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. who knows what's really hiding in there. And we don't do that here, Brandon. You, you know <laughs> that, right? <laughs> you parking a lot. Of it. Yep. But, but those people, so that supports a lot of the Southern migration stories that are told by the First Nations tribes rather than mm-hmm. coming from the East 
mm-hmm. or well, technically for for us it would be further west, but you know what mm-hmm. what is considered the east mm-hmm. coming across a land bridge from Russia to Alaska and migrating south. This would be a southern migration, meaning that they came from the south north. They came yeah. from South America here. Mm-hmm. Now, where where else would they have had that kind of experience to see those structures to know to build them? Because, yeah. Or is it just one of the convergent evolution things where the human mind all of a sudden has this synaptic snap? It's like, oh, you know what kind of structures would be great? Stepped pyramids. That's what they try to sell to us right now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'll, I'll had tell this you. Idea around the same time. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. I, I, I'll tell you. I mean, as far as it goes, my my theory has always been that, you know, there was a, a southern expansion upwards. Um, you hear that in multiple tribes, and you also hear it um, from uh, some of the uh, ancient legends of, um, you know, the Aztec, for example. Uh, the the the, um, the legend of Atslan, you know that's uh, that's a good one because you know that's um, that's the ancient homeland, and according to you know, I guess whoever whichever version you want to read or whichever version you want to believe, um, it was a mythical city. And uh, this is where allegedly uh, the the theory is that they took a lot of the gold, I guess, uh, when when all of Mesoamerica was pretty much under attack at this point. You know, the whole Aztec Empire was falling, and um, and they had moved it to Atslan, which they said was their original, I guess, their original home. Um, no one knows where it's at though. That's that's a problem. It's a lost city. It's completely lost. But if they did do that, if they did manage to go back to their original homeland and, you know, wherever it was, and it was a little bit up north, right? Um, who said they quit going any further? Yeah. I mean, think about it. Who says they quit going any further? And what's, you know, what's to stop them from going west and, and east at that point? Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. They're well, an advanced culture. People, speaking of... Uh... Atslan is, uh, they, they suspect that essentially from Idaho all the way to Texas yeah. yeah, is, is how large Atslan is. So, I mean, you're talking a large swath of the country. The, the one of the biggest meatiest chunks of the United States mm-hmm. was part of the Aztec homeland. Yeah. yeah if that's true. Yeah. And there have been people looking for the gold of Atsalon and uh, the Grand Canyon. They've been mm-hmm. looking all of these national historic monument sites, uh, like, for, like I said, Grand Canyon, the mm-hmm. Narrows, um, Havasu, all these places. They've looked right. for gold in those places because mm-hmm. it's all been rumored. Because there were certain descriptions. When you'd hear them talk about Atsalon, you they, they do describe canyons. They describe these high desert rims, and and it is very reminiscent of what you would see in that entire region, you know. And it would explain some of that northern migration. Mm. And it also explains why there's a uh, a difference in appearance of some of the you know Pacific Northwest tribes compared to say the Cherokee. Right, or or right. Shawnee, or or any of the the eastern tribes. Yeah, the, the body build is different. The facial structures are different. Um, and, and a lot of the facial structures of the eastern tribes very much resemble some of the the drawings that we have of the Aztec. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of the art that we found that yeah. we could swear looks like it's South American, right? Like that's right. So much of what's yeah. been found in the uh, the Fort Ancient mounds in Kentucky, yeah. so yeah. much of the stuff that was recovered out of the mounds in West Virginia and Ohio look like mm-hmm. Mesoamerican remains and artifacts. And some of it is just flat out said it can't be real. It's yeah. fraud. It that's can't right. be real. 
because it doesn't fit the status quo. But, you know, according to, again, I get it. I mean, you're talking about these myths and legends and whatnot. I mean, even even the Aztecs say that it was it was their their god, their ruler, uh, Husleo Pochili, who basically said, this is your land, but you need to go beyond your land. And that's why they left originally. So, you know, they went south, they went north, they went, you know, whichever directions, all these directions. But is it just a origin story, kind of like the Hopi, you know, uh, or is it something more? That's the question. And I'm saying, you know, I'm talking, I'm bringing them up. I'm bringing the Aztec up in particular here because of the similarity of yeah. the construction techniques. They cannot be denied. You can't deny that, that, right. that some of these look Mesoamerican, right? Um, but is there any proof? That's the problem. That's our problem because we can't find proof. And even if we did find proof, what would it be? What is the proof that we have to have that we put on to the scholar's desk and make them say, well, now I got to rewrite all these books. What kind what of proof? It, today we do live in a time period where that is starting to become more, more of a trend. You know, just like in the news section earlier, we were talking about the expansion of Homo sapien sapien and they're, they've bumped it back to 45,000 years ago in Northern Europe. Sure. And those things are starting to be more kosher. They're starting to be more palatable and people aren't like, well, now I have to go rewrite the entire book. I have to go. The problem you know, being they're starting is, to be more okay with that now, as opposed to what they were 20, 30 years ago. But here's the thing. I can give you that because we can look at bone structures yeah. and we can say, yep, that's Neanderthal. That's, you know, homo sapiens, 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 but we're talking about tribes. Who, how, there's nothing, you know? I mean, that's the problem. Uh, aside from finding a full-blown South American pyramid sitting in the heart of Appalachia, oh, wait, there was one. Yeah, right along See the New saying? River. This is what I'm saying. So um, it's all gone now. Yeah. So what can we hope to find? How can we because prove what's being placed on those scholars' desks now, what's being placed on historians' desks, unfortunately, are items that were also placed in mounds on That's purpose right. as tribute to ancestors. Right. So you have this historical contamination. Yeah. You've got, like you said, uh, uh, gifts to the ancestors. You've got absolute uh, desecration. Yes. Because that happened too. On all sides, that's happened too. Yeah. Throughout history. So we don't know. And that's one of our problems because, I mean, why do you think they're fighting right now over Fort Ancient and, you know, Hopewell? I, it's a never ending battle. Yeah. Every 10 years, it gets changed. Yep. It's true. It's very so, true. Yeah. It's, it's just an unbelievable thing because, I mean, it's gotten to the point now to where if I read anything, about an archaeological find and it has to do with Fort Ancient or it has to do with Hopewell. It's like, well, I can toss, I can just toss the dice in the air and say, you know, it doesn't matter because here's the, here's the deal. It's, uh, there's no proof. You're, you're basing your proof off of something that was dug up over here in this layer of dirt. That, that, that thing that you dug up in that layer of dirt, that's X amount years old. That's what you're basing it on. Yeah. And you're just assuming that that thing was put there at the same time that that dirt was put there. Yeah. No, you no. <laughs> I mean, you can't assume that. I mean, I guess you could assume it if there's multiple multiples, right? But even then, maybe not. How many times have you walked by a work site and you've seen the big layer, you know, the big rubble piles that they have, right? Yeah. How hard would it be for, you know, that stuff to get covered up? <clears throat> Later on, you're digging around somewhere. We're talking about, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years in the future. 
I guess it's your reincarnation. I don't know. But anyway, you're digging around somewhere, right? And uh, you, you come across this mound of, and I've did this once, actually. It was a mound of bottles. I remember digging it up. And there was, a, there was an old uh, trash heap dump back where I lived at one time. And there were some really cool bottles there. But it's all trash. Well, this trash that I was digging up was probably a good 50 years old. Well, okay. It's a trash, right? So I'm going to go and get my trash. I'm going to put it there, too. I'm just going to bury that there. Yeah. Now, tell me what trash is what and which one came from what time period. You can't. Unless you have a time machine, you can't. Because it's all contaminated. It's all contaminated. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah. It's a belief system. It's really what it comes down to. And, you know, I wouldn't have been an archaeologist so bad when I was growing up. I really did. And then the more I learned about it, the more it was just like, it's just belief systems. There's no difference in it than ufology. Yep. It's, okay, this guy said this, so I'm going to believe what he says because <laughs> I don't really like how this guy over here is saying this stuff. So I'm going with this one right here. Well, and I'm oh, like, this is what my friends are talking about. I'm going to yeah. them. So what did I do? Uh, I I went to the source. That's what I did. And I listened to the, the old stories. And I believe those stories. I believe those stories over this, this Anglo story. Let's put it that way. Yeah. I mean, those were the people that were here. Those are the people that were here. Those are the people That's... who recorded their, you know, their histories on rocks, in symbols, yeah. word of mouth over and over again, you know. That's the thing about that culture that people don't understand, you know. And when you see the the symbols, right? You we we hear it all the time, you know, called some ancient astronaut theorists say yes, but some of these symbols of all these these creatures and these weird shapes and stuff, well, they're not meant to be taken literally. They never were meant to be taken literally. That's the problem. It's not one of those things, and you'll see that image all the time where they drew it because they saw it kind of thing. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's true. That's true. That's true. They, they did see it. But what was they, it, they were seeing, you know? That's the thing, an interpretation. It's all interpretation, but we don't know that world, right? So it's kind of like quantum reality, if you think about it. If you don't know the framework, you can't get the story. Does that make sense? So if, if I drew a spiral on the wall and now we look at that spiral and say, oh, that is a portal. That is a representation of a portal. That's all you got? You're going to say it's a portal? I mean, but back then it could have been like, that is, you know, not only is that the portal, that is the gateway. This is how you do it. This is what you do. And it was a whole story. That one symbol was a whole book, essentially. That's all yeah, gone. When you would see that symbol, the story would come to mind and you would tell the story. Because you were told that story. You were yeah. told that story for thousands of years by the storytellers over and over. And they got it right every single time or they didn't tell the story. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So when I hear stories about these big pyramids in North America, I'm like, yeah, they were here. They're 100% here. And you know what, Brandon? I think they still are here. I think that some of those mountains out there, I'll, I'm going to be one of those people. I think some of those mountains out there could very well have something in them, for, for all I know. We don't know because we well, don't do what they did down some South Some of America. them are marked. Some of them are, are marked by USGS and things like that. The earth structures along the New River, for example. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> but you know they're not the only one. No, they're not. They can't be, right? Those walls are not the only thing. They can't be. Yeah, yeah I absolutely agree with you. That can't be the only thing there. There's you're there's talking about Mount much... Carbon, right? Mount yeah. Carbon, yeah, yeah. There's uh, th there's so much out there that we've not touched, yeah, all across the United States on purpose, yeah, on purpose, and you know we're we're doing it to our own detriment at this point. But there are so many restrictions now. You know, yeah. what happened recently. Yeah. It took effect it's this true. month with the, the museums yep. where artifacts had to be pulled off the uh, display cases in the national museums. And it, it affects all museums, but the national museums yeah. went first. Um, 
if they did not have specific permissions from tribal permissions tribal permission to have these artifacts on display they had to remove them yeah hundreds of exhibits across the united states immediately closed now i don't know what constitutes a tribal permission could that be you know a pre-existing grandfathered in permission i don't know like there's probably some tricky stuff with that too yeah like somebody somewhere along the line said yeah you can put that up there yeah yeah and and those those i'm sure would still be open but there are many exhibits that have had the lights turned off and they've been oh, removed yeah. from display. Mm-hmm. I like how they uh, just have to get permission, but they're not going to return them. Just take them off the shelf. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. 100% we're still agree. keep them, but we're just not going to mm-hmm. show them to you. Well, this is another. Okay. So what really happened here, in my opinion, was another dupe. It was another dupe. They pretty much said, yep, we're going to do this for you guys. We're going to do this for the for the First Nations people because we feel really bad about what we did. And we're going to take them off display. And the First Nations people were like, okay. And they worked with them because they thought they were going to get their stuff back. And they probably were like, you know what? We took them off display. And they were like, well, can we have them back? No. Where are they going to go? Where are they going to go in a box? They're going to go in a box and they're going to be shoved into a room and no one's ever going to see them again. Isn't that great? They're, probably they're not on display right. anymore. No, it's not great. It's not right. If you're going to take it off display, give it back to the people. I mean, what, yeah, because here's they rob the, their graves anyway to take it. Well, the long run here is this. Here's the, long, here's, here's the, the truth of the matter. The truth of the matter is this. The guards today, the where we're at, our reality doesn't exist in the future, right? Yeah. We, we talked about time travel before. So in the future, all those guards are gone. All those artifacts are wherever they're at, just waiting to be found by the new guard. Yeah. Who are they? So everything you're doing is futile is what I'm getting at. It doesn't really matter because eventually that that stuff's nobody's that's that's what it comes down to it's nobody's you know i mean i have artifacts i have artifacts that some i made myself some i've I've been gifted over the years they're not mine i'm a keeper that's it i'm a keeper and once i'm done it'll go to someone else but it'll outlive all of us yeah and someone's going to dig it up at some point in the future and they're going to try to figure out what it was who had it and they're probably never going to get it right ever. And I'm going to curse it all. <laughs> so anyway. Yeah. You know, but it's, that's, that's the thing. Mm. It's, it's a very sad um, history that we've got here in the United States and in North America. Cause it's not just us. It's oh, not yeah. just the United States. It's all, it's the whole of North America it has yeah, a very America. tragic history of, Disrespect. Destroying artifacts, destroying mm-hmm. sacred areas, and losing them to history forever. Yes. Yes. And completely disrespecting uh, com- cultures yeah. <clears throat> yeah, That's that, that they don't agree with. It would be yeah. different they, if they had got permission, yeah. dug it up, and then put it back together the way it was, out of respect. But they didn't. They completely just took it apart. Took all the stuff that was inside of it, shoved it in boxes, like you said, and it was lost forever. Because a lot of the stuff, like the stuff that was in the South Charleston mound, yeah. that stuff, they don't even know where it is. They've said they that really they don't, don't. Even know where it is mm. in the museum. No, no, they really don't. There's a lot of people visiting. Oh, they know where it's at. I really don't think they do. After we've talked to Emily uh, yeah. and listened yeah. to some of her, you know, talking about the Smithsonian and, and how, you know, um, they have mis- misplaced stuff over the years. And uh, it's like, well, geez, I can see that. I mean, if you've well, got one the, guy. There was a FOIA request that uh, is, is out there floating around on the Internet that you guys can go look at. Um, where somebody asked about, I think, four or five specific mounds. Mm-hmm. Asking about where the remains are stored and what their box numbers are. Oh, God. That's what was, that's exactly what was asked. And... They received a return because they were granted the FOIA because it wasn't an absurd request. 
and the response from the smithsonian was essentially yeah yeah that used to be over here in this right. corner someone but, moved it but it's been moved and we will do our best to get those uh those items i guess found <laughs> no, really, was, yeah. it was essentially how this thing reads like in a in a very very long drawn out way it's basically like yeah it's like asking your toddler hey where's where's your favorite toy from last week yeah so if uh, understand, uh, <clears throat> i threw it over here empty. it's hiding under the bed and you go look under the bed and it's not there and what it's because they don't Brian? remember what'd you say brian um, from what I remember reading about the excavation, they took mm. everything out of that mound. There's nothing left in there but dirt. Yeah, everything in South mm. Charleston. Um, South Charleston was not on that wreck. We all we know where every piece of that went. The same as uh, the mound over in Dunbar. Every mm. ounce of everything in it was gobbled up by the uh, British History Museum. Yeah, a lot of our our British stuff History is in Museum. British History Museum. Yep. Mm -hmm. They wanted yeah. it all because when they found out that the United States was th literally throwing it away, mm -hmm. when they were just chucking it in the rivers, people were taking these artifacts and literally mm -hmm. by the, the barrel load, throwing them into the rivers to get rid of them. The British History Museum started just gobbling them up and it all went overseas. And a lot of it's on display there. A lot of it's categorized in boxes. And if you call them and ask them where it's at, oh, it's over here and this, they know exactly where it's at. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, they got a lot of the stuff. Yeah. A lot of stuff from here. So I didn't know that. Oh yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. I did know they were dumping it in the rivers though, because occasionally think... a skull or a femur bone will wash up on shore. Yep. Or after a oh, flood yeah. it'll be out in the field. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. You know what they yeah. also used to do with it? They would take it all and uh grind it up and sell it as fertilizer. They did. They did that, that was the most disgraceful thing that that was ever done they did that with mummies in egypt they yep. did same thing same thing they also ground up the mummies in egypt and sold them to china as a uh yep after to get your randy they did <clears throat> you know they right. used to sell it too in england as a um, snake oil cure for all kinds of crap oh yeah man. Man. so you know it's it's pretty common is what we're seeing here is just this disrespect. complete disrespect for cultures you know i know we can't save everything i get that I totally do. I understand that progress. We got to move forward, right? But there's a balance. And there's a balance that comes down to just respecting people, yeah. respecting a culture, you know, giving them their due. You know, if I'm not going to keep this stone artifact, if 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 I'm not going to do anything with it, I can't do anything with this thing legally for at least a hundred years. Here you go, take it back. What are they going to do with it? They're going to bury it. Someone's going to dig it up in the future. Here's right. what I say. If they really give a crap like they're trying to say right now, what they need to do is pass a bill that says, oh, if this is dug up here on this tribal land or this ancestral tribal land, we have to get permission and have someone from that tribe oversee everything mm -hmm. to make sure it's handled correctly. But they have tribal right. archaeologists. There are. There, do, there are tribal. Not enforced, really. Yeah, but there are tribal archaeologists, and, and some of those are they they do really good there are, are certain mm -hmm. museums that do really good no brandon what needs to happen we have the technology now we can do this we can do a full-on investigation to go in there without literally taking anything mm -hmm. all we have to do is 3d scan it yep we can scan it we can lidar the whole area we can create the whole thing 100% digital in a holodeck type environment. Yeah. So if we ever want to go back in there, we can go back in there and look at it. We can take those photos. That's not going to hurt anything. That's not going to hurt anything. That's a great compromise. That gets history. And that also preserves those artifacts for, you know, the, uh, the culture who wants to come claim them and take them away. Because we don't care about what they look like. We shouldn't care about what they look like on the space. Tell us. If we go out and dig something up, you should have did that. You destroyed its cultural integrity. It's It means nothing now. Okay, then why is that in, why is in the museum? Why is that piece in the museum that farmer, you know, Ted or whoever it was, donated to you guys? 
did farmer Ted give you a detailed analysis of where he found that? No, he didn't, did he? You just have it in the museum. You want to play hands off, keeps you, it's mine. That's what you want to play. Somewhere out in this field. Yeah. For yeah. real, dude. And that's, those are in museums. Those are in the cultural center. Yeah. That happens. That happens. The uh, so, Southern yeah. Ohio Cultural Center, that whole upper floor, every bit of it was found on the riverbanks or it was found in the field. Mm -hmm. It's unbelievable is what it is. And, um, and yeah, I mean, we can do that now, though. We don't have to. We can just make these massive, massive data, you know, files of all this stuff virtually. And then the tribes can come take their stuff and do with it as they please. Yeah, and it's also sad to me, too, because um, if we had given a crap in the past, we could know a lot more about these cultures than just guessing by the stone tools they used. Well, some of us like did that. give a crap, but it doesn't matter because there's not enough of us. Yep. Yeah. That's the problem. That's the problem. There needs to be more yep. of that. So, yeah, change the world. And it's got to start with you. It has been... Uh, a lot of arguments lately about which stone making culture came first now because there's a lot of debates hot debates going right. on in the arche archaeological community right now about it right like, right oh, especially did the, did the clovis people come first or such and such and then they're arguing about it who existed before who mm -hmm. existed closer to the ice age than this one right and, and what they don't want to well, and what they don't want to touch on, what they don't want to really deal with is the big picture. And the big picture says that this is as far back as we can go because everything degrades. Mm -hmm. Those people, yeah. like we mm -hmm. say, may be the survivors. They had to start all over. That's as far back as we can see. We can't see what they were before. We can't see the other end of the Ouroboros. It's been, it's been eaten. It's gone. What's funny is um, if you look at a map of the ones that were actually charted mm -hmm. they actually follow the ice sheet from the ice age they go oh, that's right a good around point. the border of it mm -hmm. that's true they do that's a good point yeah yeah that's a very good point yeah none of them go further north than where that ice sheet supposedly was mm -hmm. so what's that tell you getting harvest kind of or fun. hunt up that way <laughs> you know no, you couldn't because there's how many feet of ice? You mean miles? <laughs> miles, yeah. That's, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. It's like you got to, I mean, I know, and I don't think people do realize that, Joe. I think when they think of a glacier, they think it's just, you know, snow. You're right. No, it's a landmass of, made of ice and snow. And it yeah. moves. <laughs> and and it moves. And all kinds of other crazy material that just whatever it digs up. when it froze. Yeah, whatever it digs up and gouges down, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, pretty fascinating if you really think about it. I mean, it was but so yeah. thick, it dug out the Great Lakes. So. Right. <laughs> right, right. So, yeah, I mean, and, uh, you know, so what was here before? Who knows? But what I can tell you is uh, it does appear that we did have, just like every other continent on the planet, pyramids. Yes. We had pyramids. And do you know why we had pyramids, guys? Do you know why? Aliens. <laughs> no. no, I'm not sure why we have pyramids. Um, I think that they're, well, you can call them what you want, I guess. But um, I do think that there was a central, um, what should I, how should I say this? A central governing intelligence behind the design. There was a place it came from. There was a teacher. And you can go look at the legends of those people and argue that with whoever you want to, but the legends say what the legends say. A lot of these people were taught by, by someone and they had advanced knowledge. A pyramid's pretty darn advanced, by the way. I just want to let you know if you, if well, you don't know that. If you consult TikTok, the I, I try thing not to. going around right now is that the Thanks, flattened Jeff. pyramids, the ones with the flat top, were actually launch pads. Oh, that's been a theory for a hot minute. Yeah, it's, yeah but so that's that what they're just like spreading back around, around that's ancient, right now. That's ancient aliens. There's a there's a concept that someone yeah. had did, uh, one of the little art things that they did a long time ago. I think it was that like was, back in season one. Yeah, it's forever ago when they made it look like a, they were coming down and landing on the... So I, I can 
down I south of America. Kind of say maybe to that one because what's wrong with you? Why would you say? That? Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't want to say no because it. Some of those are pretty big. I can see that being used for something like that. Maybe. No, I've seen no proof of it, but no, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think uh, if if anything, uh, they would have landed somewhere else. I, th- I think that you know, I don't. I don't think that they. I, I think. Mean, what a lot of them probably were used they? for were to look at the stars. To well, see we know the there's a line so they can get a clear view of everything. What's well, that? And you have to know where they're going to come from, mm-hmm. so you can, you know, go out well, there. And... They told you how to build them and where to build them. Wouldn't matter where they come from. <laughs> there it is. Put it here. Make it big. Make it flat. Hokey dokey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course, then they got repurposed by like the. Mines and Aztecs. Not everybody that came across them. Yeah. Like, exactly. Okay, his, 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 before before we wrap up, hmm? I want to leave everyone, all of our listeners, with this thought. Nearly every civilization where pyramids exist and have been found, yeah. the story goes back to terminate with they were here when we got here. Yeah, and that should be a sobering thought for people. They should really think um, about that. That's actually part of Egyptian history too, because there was a pharaoh who uh, was wandering through the desert and found the Great Pyramid of Giza just barely poking out of the sand, and he uh, commanded that they dig it out, and they found this big plaque sitting in front of it saying, um, "This was commissioned for such and such god," and blah 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 blah. So, and they don't even know how old that was really or if that was even true um well that's where i mean I, ancient astronaut theorists get that whole idea that he's mm, way older than we think because of let's that just reason. say that it's not beyond human nature to claim something as your own that's already there right, right. yeah he didn't say he built it he claimed it he claimed it there you go right well, you know, you got the whole thing with the the Sphinx showing water erosion and whatnot. I mean, it, yeah. it's way older than what we think. I think, you know, and and there's another thing that's been going around a lot too. And and these people who are quoting this are ridiculous because they're trying to say it's proof of the Great Flood. It's proof of you know. Okay, so here's the deal, guys. This is a fact. Joe, we've had really bad floods in the past, right? Like yeah. really bad floods, terrible mm-hmm. floods. Is there any geological record after 10,000 years of, of those floods? It depends on the uh, severity of the water and how mm-hmm. much of the earth it removed. If it's only for 40 days and 40 nights. Yeah, again, it, 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 some of this water can, can hit these areas at such high pressure and high speeds that it can cut into layers and geologically, sure. you can look at those layers that have been exposed and say, well, this time and this time are different. So there had to have been a flood that ripped out a big, massive trench of erosion. You can look at that, but it's not going to erode stone. Thank you. So that's, no, that's what, all I needed. That's all I needed. Yeah, that's that's how you're going to. Uh, th- that's the only way you can measure that. You can look in a valley. Yeah. And yeah. you can see where a heavy flood had occurred historically. Sure. Absolutely. The wash area, right? The, mm-hmm. Not yeah, you got the wash area, but some of these other floods, like they've um depending on how much sediment had been mm-hmm. built up, they can cut through that sediment like a hot knife through butter and leave a gully well, yeah. when they dry up. Go and look at uh what was it? Um uh, the one we did on the floods. Uh, Fallen Worlds. Yeah. The legend, yeah. Uh, something of the flood, whatever. Um, there's some really great stuff we went over on that. And yeah. and some of those images, man, those yeah, the, I mean that th- that is what you're talking about. Right. But, yeah. But what these guys are soft sediment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cut through the soft topsoil and all the other softer layers and expose sure. everything else. And it yeah. will like I said, just it'll leave a gully. Sure like, it will. But, but it won't cut it won't carve stone. stone. No, it's and that's what leave. a lot of these people are, you know, that's what they're they're using. They're saying, Oh yeah, this is what it was. So look, I'm not saying there wasn't a great flood. We we know there was, by the way. Right. There was I mean, it was it was bigger than what you think, probably. But <laughs> there are know. great, so many great flood stories. Oh man, mm-hmm. like I said, like Ron said, go over, go over twelve hundred, over twelve hundred uh, 
you know, flood stories. Yeah. And we went over a lot of those. So go, go listen to that. But what I'm saying is, um, if the great, you know, the pyramids, the Sphinx, <clears throat> the whole area was submerged and it caused that erosion, that was thousands of years. That wasn't 40 days. That was thousands and thousands of years. And it was only, it's only so high up on the Sphinx. So what, what really yeah. occurred was the river came up and just rode along the edge of the body. For thousands of years. Yeah, Think they, about um, that. I mean, it wouldn't, it was because it's sandstone. It, I believe the Sphinx is sandstone, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, yeah, it, it's sandstone. It wouldn't take thousands of years for that to erode. It, it would take a long time. But I think you'd be, you could, the level of erosion that's been found on the Sphinx, is you could probably pull off in a couple hundred years. But still, long time. Mm-hmm. Well, either way, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's still a long time. That means that there was water setting Lots against the side of the Sphinx. Lots of well, water. Well, at one point, too, they had actually dug a trench from the Nile to go directly in front of the Sphinx. That way they could float their boats up in there to go and worship at the boat at the temple and stuff like that, that they made. There was a whole yeah. village that existed in front of the Great Pyramids that held the cults and stuff that worshiped certain gods and stuff there. Like that was a whole market mm-hmm. itself. So I can imagine that would probably flood every year when the flood season came around. It would probably wash right up to the Sphinx. Yeah, it's it's so remarkable, but it goes back to show that a lot of these structures are much older, and for some reason, we have a congruency on multiple continents that goes back to a similar form, showing that there was some sort of connection at one point in time, and we don't know what that connection is, and that, to me, is probably the most, I wouldn't say troubling, but interesting point here because it it proves that there is a vast amount of human history that we have a chosen to ignore or b are painfully aloof to Mm -hmm. i think it's both (laughs) yeah i think the people who know don't want you to know that's what i think and they're working very very hard to keep you from knowing to me there's no way that they could have so many cultures around the world separated by thousands of miles of ocean. Not only that, but just the limitations that they supposedly had with vehicles and whatnot back then that were building stuff at the same time that looked exactly the same, but they had no communication. They had communication. I find that hard to believe. Yeah, they had communication. There had to have been that's, a network of some kind. That's it. There was. There absolutely was. But uh, that's probably a show for another time in the future. <laughs> um, yeah. Why it was pyramids? Because of pyramid power. Could that be a show in the future? Yeah, it could be. So, final thoughts. Brandon. Uh, go, Brandon. Um, my final thought is that there is obviously a massive campaign to keep all this stuff hidden, to uh, make it uh, not so obvious to the general public, and basically keep them uninterested in it. Instead, you'll be like, oh, look at these cool arrowheads. Look at these. Oh, these are neat. Don't pay attention to these old mounds and these the bones that were inside of it and the stone structures they built inside of the mounds. Don't pay attention to all the other evidence that we found. And not, not to mention the intentional campaign to just whitewash the whole thing. Just yeah. clearly dump it in the rivers, grind up the bones, try to get rid of it as fast as possible. And then there's also the campaign to just dump in whatever they did have like, oh, okay, yeah, we'll take it into a museum and then just completely forget where you put it on purpose. Yeah. Getting that. That's right. what I think happened. Um, humans are elitists and uh, they seek to control, uh, divide, and conquer and rewrite history in uh, whatever fashion or, or, you know, that it may... Uh, I guess whatever fashion or faction it may uh, make look good, and I think that's one of our issues. We have um, we have people who have done just that. They have rewritten history for themselves yeah. because uh, the truth was very, very, very inconvenient for them, and they did not like it. Well, my, I think my my final takeaway on this is that our 
history here on Earth is much stranger, much more complex, and far different and far older than what is being taught. Uh, we're finding that out literally day by day with every passing day. New finds are being uncovered that push back human history thousands of years each time. And these pyramids in North America are built very similarly to other pyramids all around the world, which means that at one point there was a connection. All and around the world. All around the world. All around the world. And on Mars. And on other planets. I had to say that. <laughs> you think I was going to talk about pyramids and not mention that, guys? Come on now. And and we're looking at the possibility of if we drive down this road far enough, everything that we understand about our existence can get upended in an instant if we flip the right stone. It could be so, protected, so don't flip it. <laughs> right, right, right. So take a picture of it. That is that is my final takeaway. That things are so much more strange than than what we are led to believe. And that be it is not as phone. simple. History is not as clean cut. Nope. History is far older. Our history is far older than than anything that we could wrap our minds mm -hmm. at this moment. Mm -hmm. It's foolish to think that we know everything without wanting to look at, you know, uh, evidence further. Just like Avi had said, you know, pretty much they think they know everything, so they're not going to look. Same thing. It's the exact same thing. We've got to keep looking. Yeah, yeah, I think part of it is it's not just that they don't want to change history or that they have. There might be a dark motive, but I think a lot of it is arrogance. It's just they have that know-it-all arrogance and they just refuse mm -hmm. to accept anything different. Well, guys, I got the, uh, before we close up, I've got our round out for our downloads of Ooh. the week by city and country. And, um, man, it's another <laughs> shaker. <laughs> Some things have changed. Jamaica is still setting at number five, guys. They have held the number five slot on countries, followed by Australia, Canada, the United Kingdom, and the United States. So, Folks from Jamaica, we have still yet to hear from you. Shoot us an email. We're dead serious. We we want to hear from you guys. Yes. Um, thank you for listening everywhere you're listening at, all around the world, and uh, particularly for whatever reason, Huntington, West Virginia, this week. Uh, thank you guys for listening in Huntington. Um, you all made up four percent of our total downloads <laughs> across huh. the board. Um, that's, that's pretty awesome. I don't think Huntington has ever been at the top. No. So thank you guys for listening. Uh, followed up by Columbus, Ohio, New York, New York, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Atlanta, Georgia. Thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, tell your friends and family about Wild and Weird Radio. Tell them to like, share, and subscribe while you do the same yourself. And make sure that if you've had a encounter, you head over to wildandweirdwv.com, hit the report of sightings tab, fill out the questionnaire and get that sent in. We will review it. If it's something that can be investigated, we will come investigate it. If we are outside of our range, if you are, you know, one of our listeners from across the country, you're in luck. We work with research teams around the country and around the world now that we can get people in your yard looking at your invest looking at your case and doing their due diligence to uh, make sure that this thing gets held up and and gets investigated properly if you want to come on the show at some point you can contact us at wild and weird wv at gmail.com if you would like to have a book promoted uh anything for that matter you can also reach us at wild and weird wv at gmail.com and make the pitch. We will see where it goes from there. Then, if you would like to, I don't know, 
come hang out and see if there's any spots available for the wild and weird high strangeness workshop uh there's a good chance that if you're listening to this right now it might already be sold out but if you want it go to wildweirdwv.com click on the link there and go grab yourself a ticket it is going to be limited to 35 seats available uh you definitely do not want to miss this one it is going to be an absolute ball there are tons of things in store for you guys uh we've got it we're gonna be going over equipment we're gonna be going over the history of the area we're gonna be going over uh various 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 i can't say that enough topics at this one we're also going to have guest speakers and we have a special treat lined up for everybody who's coming you're going to love it we're keeping that one under wraps though but one thing we can't do is you're gonna have food and you know that's gonna be good but come check it out go to wildmarewwv.com see if you can register still yet at this point when you're listening to this show because the like we've always said the announcement's going live that was yesterday so go 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 do the thing go do the thing and remember, history is weird. History is really, really, really wild and weird. And that means we're never going anywhere. Stay wild, murder.